Okay. All righty, so I wanna read Pet Detectives. This one's kind of cool because you're gonna take a quiz that has to do with this one, real life pet detectives. Detective helps to find lost animals. Okay, so on this one, we're gonna make, we are gonna be making connections with the text. How does this relate to me? How does this idea relate to other ideas in the text or other texts that we've been reading? And how does this relate to the world? Okay. Fort Lauderdale, I'm gonna put myself down here. Um, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, that's where it was written. Oh, go back. 20 years ago, Jim Carrey played a cartoonish private investigator in the movie Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Carrey's character specialized in finding lost animals. Jamie Cat is a real life pet detective. Uh -huh. Cats, get it, cat? Is it, but that's her real name, actually. She is a real life pet detective, though much more serious one. She spends her days responding to clients through email and phone calls. Recently, she helped return a parrot to its owner. The African gray parrot, Oscar Gray, had ended up in the hands of a woman who claimed to be a bird rescue. She would not release Oscar to his owner. After six days, the owner, Liz Kahout, turned to cats for her services. Cats actually shared a friend with this bird rescuer and used the connection to fight for the parrot's freedom. Oscar was home the same day. And this is something we're going to be doing in class, finding evidence in the text to support what we think about a statement. She's one in a million. Oscar Gray is the latest of about 150 animals Katz says she has helped return to their owners. Katz is one of the only few such only a few such investigators. She thinks there's only about 10 full-time pet detectives across the entire country. Wow. The pet detectives say it is still important to make themselves different from each other. Atlanta pet detective Kim Freeman specializes in finding lost cats. She times sometimes uses her tracking cat, Henry, who she says is only the only such cat in the world. Freeman studied under the first de de pet detective, Kat Albrecht. Albrecht has written books on finding animals and trained hundreds of inspiring pet detectives. Hmm, I wonder if that would be a good job. Freeman said she decided to dive headlong into her career after her own cat went missing. She used Albrecht's methods to find him. If I'd listened to people's advice, my cat wouldn't have would have died in the storage container he was trapped in. Many pet detectives, hmm, what does that mean? She decided to dive headlong into her career after her own cat went missing. She used Albrecht's methods to find him. If I'd listened to people's advice, ah, uh, your cat will just come home, right? My cat would have died in the storage container he was trapped in. Hmm. Many pet detectives start out trying to find their own lost animals. Albrecht, who lives in Canada, was a police officer and bloodhound handler when her own bloodhound, AJ, went missing in 1996. She decided to try using another search and rescue dog tr to track AJ. It worked, spawning a new career for Albrecht and later a new professional field. It all began with the lost cat. This is one of those text structures we see in informational texts. You see that heading, right? You don't necessarily see that in our fictional texts, do we? For cats, the start was a cat. She was working as a licensed private investigator three years ago when she began helping a friend look for her vanished kitty. The investigators her friend hired who had planned to use tracking dogs never showed up. The cat was eventually found, but cats continued to wonder if dogs really could be used to find lost animals. You notice they use the word kitty in this article here. Um, that's like an endearing term, right? So they're using a careful word choice to make you feel warm and fuzzy about the cat and how important it is to go find someone's kitty. Since then, she decided to spend the rest of her life looking for lost pets. Katz now uses two tracking dogs, Gable and Fletcher, who use their noses to follow a missing animal's scent from, from the last place they went missing. A client named Brandon contacted Katz to help him. His Manchester Terrier named Oliver jumped out of the car at a grocery store 
the day before and had not been seen since. He had heard of Katz through a Facebook page following Oscar Gray, the parrot. Katz asked Brandon several questions to figure out if Oliver is friendly or shy. She asked questions like, what would Oliver do if I walked into your house with no key and didn't knock first? As they spoke, Katz jotted down information and pulled up Google Maps to plot the location of the grocery store relative to Brandon and Oliver's home. Hmm. Strategies for finding a missing pet. She told Brandon about her services. The first thing she recommends is an awareness campaign. That means getting people to pay attention. This involves strategically covering the neighborhood where the dog was lost with bright yellow signs that cats creates. The sign costs the signs cost $295 while hiring cats to search for a missing pet with her tracking dogs is $705. So see the difference, signs are cheaper than actually using the dogs. Um, cats says the signs can be key in solving a case. She has used alternative methods to raise awareness about missing animal, the missing animal. Like in the case of the piano playing dog named Finnegan, Cats used news footage of the dog playing the piano to get another local story on the air. Soon, Finnegan was found. Hmm. So I'm looking at these numbers up here, 295 and 705. I really do wonder if this would make a good job for me. Sheppy, the suspicious story. Sheppy's suspicious story. Cats also had to be quite good at figuring out when a story is not true. For, ex for instance, one man called Katz about his dog named Sheppy. Now, for instance, she's giving an example, but she's using an, um, she's using, uh, now I lost the name of that. Somebody help me. Uh, uh, we'll tell you in class. <laughs> um, about his dog named Sheppy. His wife had told him Sheppy was kidnapped but Katz was suspicious in the story. She found a new story about a crocodile that had eaten a dog. Oh my goodness, the dog turned out to be Sheppy. Oh, the wife did not want her family to know about the dog's death. When her husband came to her with the news from Katz, his wife denied it. Aha, uh -huh. Katz suggested, at Katz's suggestions, he asked again two late, days later and she confessed. Oh my, the dog was eaten. Okay, and then we have a quiz after that. So here is our um, story. And just taking a look at the way an article is put together, it's much different. And you can tell this is a news article. One, it says Newsella. And number two, by Washington Post, adapted by Newsella staff. So Washington Post is a newspaper, right? And here's a picture of the real cats, the pet detective with her two dogs. Okay, so that's it. Okay.